Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the River Cats Dynasty as we continue off of the recruiting special into SEC play. And we take on number 24 LSU, led by six foot seven quarterback Sean Harwell. How can you be six foot seven, 242 pounds? and have 90 speed, that is a cheat code. We are going up against our former players in Tyson Steele, and also one of our top recruits who we thought was gonna be a good quarterback, cornerback in Joshua Wilson. He ends up trans transferring to DBU. That will definitely help out his career for sure, because LSU, he immediately gets a DB boost. Now let's hop into the action, as Brian Britt is back to receive this when he takes it out of the end zone, and he does get tackled at the 23. Now, let me just quickly talk about what I just talked about. When I do create transfers, a lot of you guys point out that they have they get a ratings boost, and it's true, they do, but it's due to the type of scheme that they transfer into. For example, if, if players were to transfer into our program, tight ends would likely get a boost, but for other programs, say for LSU, for example, if I transfer a DB there, he gets a DB boost because they're really good at developing their cornerbacks. So that's kind of how I play it. It depends on what school they go to, if they even get a boost at all, and who they're playing for and what coach they're under. You know what I'm saying? Like I just like to correlate it to the team that they're going to. So let's hop into the game. Here is Gunnar Johnson taking it up the middle on a speed option. That's a rare call that time. Gain of 15. First down, we're across the 50 already. So now set up at about the 35-yard line, just out of Kristaps Ivanov's range. Throw. It's Stephen Ford. He's got it. He puts on a move. He gets inside the 15. Gain of 24. First down for him. Nice throw by Gunnar Johnson right in traffic. Is now here's Hollington getting the handoff. He takes it up the middle, and he takes it to about the three-yard line. Gain of just nine yards on that one. But now we're inside the five as Gunnar Johnson remains in the game. He runs Stephen Ford in motion. We're going to give it. No, we're going to fake it. And Gunnar Johnson keeps touchdown three yards out. And that is going to be a 7 nothing lead for your River Cats. And now here comes LSU back out onto the field. And here comes six foot seven Sean Harwell at quarterback. Here's a veer to start out. And he's got room. And we got to take him down or else he's going to be gone. He gets tackled at the 45 by Osiris Hovick. But it's a gain of 30 already. I already highlighted the, that he is 90 speed. I mean, just look at this. This could be a preview of what Dun Carmichael could bring us next year. So here's Harwell this time taking off. And he takes it to about. Looks like the 34-yard line, 36-yard line, I should say. And that's a gain of nine. So third and one, option keeper. But this time, he's not getting away from Hovick and Odin Blue. Nice stop that time, loss of one. Will they go for it here? They're just out of field goal range. And they do. Sean Harwell, fourth and two. Let's see what he calls. Here's a handoff to the running back, Keenan. And he gets stopped. Brian York. He came into this season as a preseason All-American. He was All-American last season, and there he is getting a stop. And now our offense comes back out onto the field. So here's Gunnar Johnson, who had a nice little drive to start it out. He throws across the middle, and that's Xavier Gonzalvo, gain of eight. Our offense definitely looks better with Gunnar Johnson under center rather than Phoenix Frazier. It's not that we had an upgrade, but I think the offensive scheme just fits Gunnar Johnson a lot better. Even at 5'11", he can still sling it around. So quick throw out to the right side on third and four. That is Zane Storm, who's coming off of an extremely great game and really a welcome to the SEC with that two-touchdown game. So here is Jamari Tyson checking into the game. He is more of a power back. He's not going to be a guy that's going to blaze you, but he gets a gain of seven on that one. So third and three, quick throw. It's Stephen Ford, but he can't hold on to it. He wouldn't have got the first down anyway. And now, fourth and three. We are just on the edge of field goal range, but we're going to go for it here. Gunnar Johnson in the pocket. He's going to try to throw it to the left side. He's got Hollinson, but he ties a turn up field and can't get there. That is going to be a gain of nothing on that one. That LSU defense got to him. And now it's a turnover as now we start the second quarter. So here's Harwell. Quick throw. It's Newsom. He's got it across the 15-yard line first down. Across the 50-yard line, I should say, gain of 15. 
And now Harwell, here he is from the shotgun, two backs in the backfield. Quick throw across the middle. He's got Tyson Steele, and he's got it. Breaking a couple of tackles. He's still on his feet, and he's going to take it all the way for the touchdown. The former River Cat does that to our defense. He broke how many tackles? One, two, three, four, five. I mean, man, he is out for blood, and Tyson Steele makes us pay. It's tied at seven. So here's Jamal Wilson in the game this time. He's going to take it to the right side and pitch it. And Stephen Ford's got room, a whole lot of room. And he will get across the 50, throw a stiff arm, and get to about the 36-yard line. That's a huge gain. And Jamal Wilson, he's still going to run that option when he's in the game. And now here we are set up at the 30. Johnson throws to the right side. Gonzalvo's got it. They sent the cover zero blitz. It's a gain of 10. First down. So Johnson looks really, really good throwing the ball. Here's a handoff this time. Hollinson, who takes it up the middle. And he's only got about a gain of two on that second and seven. And now that brings it to the 15-yard line here. Third and five. Running a receiver in motion. That's Zane. He throwed out to him. He's got speed. He makes a man miss inside the 10. First down for him. And that's what you got to do. You got to get him the ball in space. That's where he works best. So now first and goal. Here's another option. This time, Wilson keeps. Touchdown. Both quarterbacks score in this one. Six yards out, 14-7. And remember, this is probably going to be the first time we're going to play top 25 teams consistently. And that's what we're going to do here in the SEC as Harwell takes it to the right side, breaking a tackle, still on his feet. And look at him run. This guy is tough to take down. Gain of about 40 yards on that one. He's already got 90 yards rushing. So now they give, got it just about in field goal range. Second and 11 tries to scramble. He sacks. That looks like it was J.J. Taylor, but no, it's Malik King who gets credit for that sack. And now that brings it to an eventual third and 15. We send the pressure once more. Harwell throws to the end zone. And it's caught. That's a touchdown. Daryl Ball. Brenton Jackson in coverage just didn't get turned around on that one. It's 14 up. Now that is a crucial mistake versus with a freshman that time. We got to get that cleaned up. Quick throw across the middle. It's Gonzalvo. A whole lot of room. And it's about a gain of 34 across the 50. A lot of big plays so far in this game. So under two minutes left here in the first half. LSU sends the pressure. Gunnar Johnson gets flushed out. And let's see what he does. He tries to get rid of it. And Storm was looks like he was coming open, but it's a loss of three yards. Roy Young on the sack. And we end up not even scoring before halftime. And that's how this one ends. It's 14 up. So here is Harwell to start off the second half. We really couldn't get anything going there at the end of the half after taking that big sack. And here is Keenan, and he takes it up the middle, and it's a gain of 14 yards. So now second and seven this time, Harwell from the shotgun. I thought he was going to hand it off there, but Harwell's going to take it off himself, and he will pick up about three yards maybe. Jake Braun was there before he slid down. He probably should have ran through him. He's six foot seven. So handoff, Keenan stopped, and that is Odin Blue. Man, is he having a good season, taking over for Javon Warren. They're going for another fourth down. They've already been unsuccessful once as they run Wilson in motion. This time, Keenan has the carry, and he does pick up the first and more. He breaks a tackle down the right sideline. He breaks another one, throwing a stiff arm. Gain of 25 to the 25, and it's a first down. Nice first down run. So now first and 10, quick throw. It's going to be caught by Tyson Steele again, who's already scored once, and it's a gain of nine. He's actually fourth on the depth chart, and he's leading their team in receiving this game. So second and one, he's in the slot this time, but they hand off to Johnson, the backup running back, who does get spun around and then loses some ground, but it's a gain of two yards for a first down. So well into the third now. Harwell keeps it, and he's got nothing but end zone in front of him. 14 yards for the touchdown, 21-14 for LSU. And it looks like Tyson Steele is pumping up his quarterback, Harwell. And now it's a seven-point game as we come back out to the field. Throw deep. Gunnar Johnson, Stephen Ford having himself a pretty good game. He's got it both feet in bounds. First down throw. 
So Wilson checks into the game, but handoff Hollinson who spins and gets the first gain of seven, but it looks like he's shaking up on that one. So he will have to come out of the game. So that brings in Jamari Tyson at running back as Gunnar Johnson checks back in too. Johnson throws deep to left side. He's got a man in the end zone, touchdown. Perfect touch on that throw. Steven Ford was open. That's a perfect throw right there. I mean, man, perfect timing, everything. And Ford is in, 21 up. So about two minutes left here in the third. Johnson tries to run the ball and gets stopped by Brian York, the captain. And that's a gain of one yard. So close to the 45, another handoff. Johnson tries to take it up the middle. This time he finds a lane and he picks up 13. That's across the 50 now. So we've been able to stop the pass pretty well, but the run has been consistent with us. As here's Harwell trying to scramble. It's a sack, and that is Corey McDaniels there. And now second and 12. Let's see if Harwell will scramble again. That's what he's has a tendency to do. He scrambles again, it's a sack. Another one, Malik King, his second sack of the game. And that brings it to a third and 17. Let's see if he scrambles once again. Harwell throws deep in the triple coverage pretty much, and it's tipped around. That was almost caught to be honest, and it's knocked down. And there we go, we get the punt we need as we kick on to the fourth quarter now. As here's Wilson in at quarterback. He's gonna give it to Whiteside. Look at Whiteside taking it up the middle. And he's got 10, the freshman has been impressive so far. As now, we get it across the 50 yard line. Here's Johnson in the game now. He throws across the middle, Steven Ford. Can't hold on to it on a third down pass. And let's see what we do. We go for it. We're inside the 40, just out of field goal range. And now we line up here, fourth and eight. Johnson throws. He's got Thomas on the sideline. Gain of 13. First down for him. That is an excellent throw and a great job by Isaiah Thomas. So now here is Wilson this time, keeping it on the option. He pitches it to Zane Storm, who takes it in. Touchdown, his second of the season, 21 yards out. You're not stopping Zane Storm when he's got a head of steam, 95 speed as a freshman. And now we have the seven point lead here as Harwell's back out onto the field. Quick throw to the sideline. It's Tyson Steele again. They know he's playing his former team, so they're getting him the ball. That's his fifth catch of the game. He's closing in on about 85 yards receiving. So screen pass out to left side, and it's gonna be Keenan tackled in the backfield, and that's Jake Braun. It looks like Keenan was shaken up on that tackle as well. So the backup running back checks in. So third and 12, they throw it out to Johnson this time. He's got it. Braun again, he's there for the stop this time. Gain of five, you gotta think LSU's going for this and they will, they have all three timeouts. Fourth and seven, the clock is still running. Harwell, he's gonna try to scramble. He cuts up field, he's got room, and he picks up a first down, gain of 14, first down. He's over 100 yards rushing in this game. So here's Harwell this time taking off, and he gets clocked. Odin blew with a huge hit, and that's a loss of one. So now third and 11, another screen pass. Johnson, he's not going anywhere. It's Braun again, loss of one, fourth and 12. So one more stop and this is the game. Here is Harwell running his receiver in motion. Tyson Steele in the slot. You gotta think he's gonna go to him, but he doesn't. He goes to Daryl Ball who scored earlier five yards and that one will be the game. We stop the six foot seven talented quarterback, Sean Harwell. And we did our thing on offense. We did not turn the ball over. We hang on to the win, and that's how you do it. And the River Cats remain undefeated in SEC play, taking on LSU. Nobody saw us coming. They saw that we won the MAC last year. Nobody saw us making this kind of noise this early in the season. As you can just see, Gunnar Johnson had a touchdown running, Jamal Wilson and Zane Storm. So no running backs had touchdowns in this one. And Hollinson was shaken up. I don't know what the status of his injury is, but he was shaken up in this game. Even Steven Ford had a 50 yard run. Everybody touched the ball, running the ball this game. Malik King had two sacks, Odin Blue had one. He had four tackles for loss. A very good game by him, as well as Jake Braun, who was there on a lot of stops. You know, the thing about LSU is that they did run some screen passes. That kind of hurt them a little bit. I think they need to open up the playbook just a little bit more 
Corey McDaniels had a sack as well. It was a good defensive game from all of our guys all around. I don't think we didn't break too much. We bent a little bit, but we got the win. So let's just look around the SEC and just looking at all of these matchups. Look at Arkansas upsetting Tam U. So now Texas A&M, who is in our, in our division, has a conference loss. And then Rocky Mountain State beats Tennessee. Metropolis beats Tulsa State. But Missouri Tech loses to Air Force, who, remember last season, Air Force's only loss was to Missouri Tech, so they get their revenge there. And Ole Miss beats Alabama. All these SEC teams are beating up on each other. But we do have some news going into next week's game, which is Missouri Tech now. J.J. Hollinson is out for two weeks. So that brings in Jamari Tyson, the redshirt freshman. I redshirted him for a reason. I wanted him to be a power back for all four seasons. And I don't know if he'll ever be a true starter. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. But I like him as a power back in this system. So I want to see what he can do here in a starting duty as we go up against Missouri Tech and Andre Smith, that quarterback, the scrambler, the dual threat guy. No more Pat Perez. I loved playing Pat Perez. He was a great quarterback to play against. But now they have a new era of quarterback and a new era of a team because really they have a lot of juniors and seniors on the offensive side of the ball and defensive. So this is probably going to be the last year Missouri Tech can truly compete at the highest level. And then we have three recruits visiting. Two top ones are Eric Macklin and Robert Price. So we will need to play some good offensive ball to impress our offensive recruits as Brian Britt is back to receive the opening kickoff. He takes it up the middle. Oh, I thought he was going to break free on that one. And he gets to about the 25. And out comes Gunnar Johnson coming off of a pretty good game here. Let's see what he can do at quarterback as he rolls out to the right side on the first play. He's going to buy some time, and he takes it to about the 43-yard line. That's a gain of three yards. So Jamari Tyson is in, third and one, handoff, and he's got a first down, gain of nine yards, first down across the 50. And let's see what number 31 can do here in this game. So here is Wilson in the game this time, first and 10. He's going to scramble and throw, and he's got Chris Whiteside, the true freshman, 16 yards. First down for him. And now we're inside a field goal range as Wilson does remain in the game. Maybe Gunnar Johnson's a little bit banged up. Quick throw. Gonzalvo, he's got it. Gain of seven. And Gonzalvo has been a guy that had a really big season a couple years ago, kind of tailored off, but he's still a very capable tight end as Tyson takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, 11 yards. There we go. Opening drive touchdowns really set the momentum for the rest of the game. And now we kick it deep to Missouri Tech as here is Mike Hall, their senior receiver, back to receive this one. And he takes it up the middle, and he's got a couple of blocks, makes a couple of men miss, and Hall is off to the races. Nobody is catching him. It's a touchdown for Hall. 100 yards for the end zone, and that is going to be a 7-7 game already for Missouri Tech. So here we are back to receive the next kickoff. Here is Brian Britt, the All-American returner. As he takes it up the middle, he makes a man miss, and he's got speed. Nobody's catching him. Back to back. Kick returns for both teams. It's a touchdown again. We are a team of big plays now. That's what we do. And Brian Britt, you just forget about him. He's an All-American returner, 14-7. So now here we are on defense now. Here is Andre Smith. He throws deep. He tests Britt. And Britt goes up and gets it. Just returned, an inter just returned a touchdown, a kickoff return for a touchdown. And look at this, an interception. I predicted Britt would get 10 picks. That was the goal this season. I think that either way, he's NFL bound. He is a shutdown corner. So here is Gunnar Johnson this time in the pocket trying to scramble out. He gets sacked, and that one was a bad sack. He kind of lost some ground. He kind of lost track of his receivers. As here's Missouri Tech back out onto the field, and this is Mark Hickman, who gets tackled in the backfield by Preston Kinney. So here's another carry out to left side, and the sophomore Hickman gets tackled again, lost by, loss of one. Jake Braun having himself a pretty good season. So now third and 12. Smith throws, and it's going to be caught by Cooper, who this time beats Bryant Britt. 
a very rare open field catch that Bryant Britt gives up, and Cooper just runs right past him. And now they're inside a field goal range to start the second quarter as Andre Smith tries to scramble. He cuts up field. Look at that cut. And he gets to about the two. Gain of 10 on that scramble. His natural tendency is to scramble, so we got to watch out for that. So handoff this time. Hickman, he gets stopped on a first and goal. That's going to be a nice tackle by Ja'Cory Reed. And now second and goal. They come out with five wide at the two. But Smith takes it up the middle. It's a touchdown. We used to run that type of concept with Bryant Simmons in our Whitetails dynasty. And there, Missouri Tech takes a page out of that playbook. It's now a throw across the middle to start the next drive, and it's Zane Storm. He gets behind the defense. Look at this route. I mean, that safety absolutely jumped the corner route and just got fooled. And Gunnar Johnson, perfect timing on that throw. It was there right after the cut. So here is Ford. This time, he takes it to the right side. He's got a gain of 12 on that catch and run. First down, Gunnar Johnson looks very comfortable throwing the ball now. So here's a jet sweep this time. Chris Whiteside takes it to about the one. Gain of three. And you got to figure we're going to give it to the big hog. That's Jamari Tyson. But no, it's Jabari Blaze who checks in. Touchdown. The senior gets a carry. And that's a touchdown for Jabari, his first of the season. It's 21 to 14. Now Missouri Tech has it right back before halftime. Here is Smith. He's going to try to scramble. He's got it to the right. He throws a stiff arm on Brenton Jackson and picks up about a gain of 16 to about the 13. Let's see if we can keep him out of the end zone before half. So here is Smith this time. Throws to the end zone. Cooper again. Touchdown. 13 yards out. Andre Smith is only two of seven. Both of them go to Cooper too. And now it's a 21 to 21 game. So here is Stephen Ford getting going right before halftime. He's got a gain of 19 of his own. He's had a couple of good games here in, here in the middle of the schedule. So here is Gunnar Johnson this time running storm in motion. You got to think we're maybe going to go to him deep over the middle as Johnson takes his time snap third and six. He moves out to the right side. Nobody's open though. He's just going to throw this one almost. That could have been a fumble because it didn't look like I mean, that ball went slightly forward. That was an interesting call that time as we do kick the long field goal, and it's good. That is a season long for Kristaps Ivanov, 51 yards out. So here is Missouri Tech. They still have some time before half. This half would just not end as TJ Snyder has it across the middle. Gain of 21 for the tight end. So here is Smith this time. He's going to try to scramble. He's got room, cuts up field, and he's got a first down. And now they're inside a field goal range. Now they're down by three. So now they just have to settle for three to tie it up going into half. But Andre Smith has other ideas. Given to Hickman. He's in. Touchdown. 28-24 now. And Missouri Tech making this a game as we move on to the third quarter. As Missouri Tech took the lead going into halftime. Here is Mark Hickman. He hesitates a little bit. Tries to make a move on Brian York. That one isn't going to work. It's a gain of nine, though. So now they get it to a third and one. Handoff. Hickman's got it again. First down. A lot more room. Breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. And gets pushed out of bounds by Brian's Britt. And it's about to the 23. He's over 100 yards rushing. So here's Hickman again. Handoff. Breaks a tackle by, it looks like that was, I don't even know who that was. Gain of six. For him, he's not over 100 yards yet. He's at 83. Read that wrong. So now second and goal. Handoff. Hickman again. He's got up the middle, and he runs over Jacob Drackett. Touchdown. And uh-oh. Missouri Tech remembers that game last year where we upset them. And now it's 35-24. to Missouri Tech is looking like they want that revenge. Here's a quick throw across the middle. It's Chris Whiteside on the next drive. He's got it. Gain of 32. In a first down. Gunnar Johnson hasn't thrown a touchdown pass this game yet. So Jamari Tyson gets the counter play up the middle. He's got enough for about a gain of 10, almost the first down, bringing it to a third and in inches. So Jamal Wilson checks in. Looks like Storm running the option. And here's Wilson. He takes it, pitches it to Jamari Tyson, and gets to about the 20. 
Gain of eight for him, first down. So it looks like we're gonna keep running this ball. This time Tyson has a lot of room up the middle and he falls forward. Gain of 10, nice run by number 31, the red shirt freshman. He's up to 66 yards carry or rushing on 10 yards or 10 carries. So here's a throw to the left side. It's caught, Gonzalvo touchdown. We're still in this game, down by four now. But let's see, will we go for two to make it a three point game? Let's see what Coach J has in mind. And it looks like he will go for two. So now to start the fourth quarter, here is Wilson. He's gonna run the option. He's gonna give it, Tyson, tackle that. The one just short of the end zone. And that extra point attempt, that two point conversion attempt will be unsuccessful. So here's Snyder this time, getting the catch out of the backfield and he gets pushed out to about the 50. And now here we are, first and 10. They're across the 50 now, Andre Smith. He's gonna try to take it up, up the middle and he does get to about the 19 yard line, gain of 16 on that scramble. We gotta stop these scrambles. Both quarterbacks, Harwell and Smith are killing us this episode. So here's Cooper again, gain of 13. Bryant Britt is getting beat a little bit. Only three catches though but still it's enough to do the damage. So here's the fullback, handoff, touchdown, Kevin Martin. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. Down by 11, five minutes left. We need some magic. So here's Gunnar Johnson this time, back on an offense. He's gonna throw to an open man. That's Chris Whiteside who's got it on the comeback route. Gain of 20, first down. So we try to waste a little bit of time here, not a lot. Here's a throw across the middle, and it's Eric Klug who goes up and gets it. It's a touchdown, 42 yards. Eric Klug. Now you forget about all the tight ends we have. We have Ethan Andrews who runs in motion on the two point conversion, and here is a throw, incomplete. That was to make it a three point game again, and we can't get it. And you just forget about all the dynamic weapons we have. They keep us in these games. So here's Missouri Tech back on offense and a false start. So now they move it back. A long third and 14. Mike Hall's got it and he gets stopped. Okay, we get the stop. We get the punt. Can we put together the drive? So Jamal Wilson is actually in the game this time. He's gonna scramble to the right side and he's not gonna throw. He's gonna take it himself if he gets to the first down marker. And that one will stop the clock as we look to hurry up to the line. So five wide out there, quick throw. Ethan Andrews, another one of those tight ends. First down catch for him, gain of 15. So now first and 10, we hurried up again. Wilson moves to the left side. He's got space. He throws, it's caught, Zane Storms open. Gain of 27 for the first down. That's improvising at its best. Zane's already at 80 yards. So here's Wilson, quick throw. It's Chris Whiteside inside the 10. Remember, we need a touchdown here. Another catch for him, he's at 93 yards receiving. So under a minute left, Jamari Tyson handoff, and he gets to about the one. So now we can just milk this clock a little bit and it does get down to 11 seconds. Wilson, he runs the receiver in motion, keeps, touchdown on the option. That's the way to get into the end zone right there. And now up by one, we're gonna line up to go for two to make it a three point game here with eight seconds left, but we do not get it. So Missouri Tech has one last heave at the end zone. Smith, he's just gonna air it out into traffic. And it's just a Hail Mary. But they Bruh. catch it. Mike Hall has the, comes down with the catch, 54 yards. But we are lucky that he got tackled. That one could have been a Hail Mary victory for Missouri Tech, but we end up getting the win. Gunnar Johnson was actually hurt on that final drive. I went back and looked at it, and he actually was hurt. So Jamal Wilson with the game-winning drive coming in off of the bench. And I like this two-quarterback system that we run. We get both of our quarterbacks playing time just in case Gunnar Johnson goes down. Jamal Wilson isn't really shell-shocked. He has the experience. And then I got to give it up to Jabari Tyson. He filled in pretty well for our hurt running back, J.J. Hollinson, who's going to be out for a few weeks probably. 
And now, just looking forward, I mean, we're undefeated in the SEC. So this is a great start. We had zero drops in this game as well in the rain. That is phenomenal. So then just looking at our defense, it looks like we had a bunch of tackles for loss, each by a different player. And Corey McDaniels had the only sack in this game. So we do get some new commits. Eric Macklin after visiting our school commits. And then the future at quarterback commits. Dunn Carmichael. Now this makes it uh, a little different for Jack Edelman. Now he moves to receiver. I highlighted that in the recruiting special because he did play receiver at the JUCO level. And I think that Dunn Carmichael is going to be the quarterback of the future. He and Jamal Wilson probably next year will compete for that starting job. We'll see. So we start out in SEC play 3-0 and in conference, 4-1 and overall in the top of our division because Texas A&M already lost in the conference. So this is a pretty good start to SEC play. I didn't expect it to go like this, but we got a couple of wins and I'm happy. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I be trying to do me, but they be trying to copy though. Only problem with that is they not me though. People act cool, but really they be shifty though. They say they got your back, but they ain't even behind me though. I be low key, but police be trying to find me.